for fears. That is, fearing negligible or non-existent threats for as long as I can remember, he writes. Communist infiltration during the Cold War, Islamic extremism in the 2000s, illegal immigration in 2010s, gender ideology in the 2020s. The right might or might not have exaggerated the urgency of these problems, but they were or are problems. That is not the case with an array of issues democratic politicians and progressive intellectuals, a.k.a. Marxists, are exercised about in 2023. You often feel they're so invested in the idea of a delusional right that they can't perceive their own penchant for dreaming up non-existent threats. And it goes on in a very excellent way. Does that, uh, <clears throat> does that article. Now, in connection with that, I want to link something up. Again, what's going on in our country, the Democrat Party? I mean, we have an election coming up. This is why there's no time than the present to be talking about these things. And then to link them into what's taking place in our country, as I'm going to do. There was a philosopher, he was a journalist. Gentleman by the name of Raymond Aron, A R O N. I've written about him before. I've talked to you about him before. He's a French philosopher. He's a great, great thinker. He said, when a party, one party alone, has the monopoly of political activity, the state is indissoluble linked to it. That is, they're one and the same. In a multi party regime in the West, the state boasts of not being circumscribed by the ideas of any competing parties. The state is neutral through the fact that it tolerates a plurality of parties. And I add, in the United States, it can now be said that the monopoly party, or at least the dominant party, is the Democrat Party. Indeed, the vast administrative state built mostly, albeit not exclusively, by the Democrat Party issues either. Dictates, regulations, rules, fines, penalties that serve the ideological purposes of the Democrat Party. Oh. Is the Democrat Party is in power or not? It, this is me speaking. It requires the affirmative intervention of a Republican administration to roll back, stop, or replace the trajectory of administrative state power exercised on behalf of the Democrat Party. It's called the swamp, but it is what it is. The administrative state <coughs> often seeks to sabotage <coughs> the of policy, thereby countering the decision of the electorate in each of the election cycle. But it can be said that the administrative state has essentially become a permanent appendage of the Democrat Party, that is the swamp. Consequently, even though elections are held, the Democrat Party has a permanent hold on major aspects of the government and policy. The more powerful the central government becomes with ubiquitous tenants, unlimited resources, increasing police powers, the more powerful the Democrat Party becomes. So Raymond Aron goes on, he says, in a one-party regime, the state is a party state, inseparable from the party which monopolizes legitimate political activity. If instead of a state of parties, a party state exists, the state will be obliged to restrict freedom of political discussion. This should all sound familiar to you now, folks. Since the state presupposes as absolutely valid the ideology of the monopolistic party, our case the Democrat, it cannot officially allow this ideology to be called into question. In fact, the restriction on freedom of political discussion varies, varies in degree according to the regime of a single party. But the essence of a single party regime, which the state is defined by the ideology of the monopolistic party, is not to accept all the ideas and to prevent some ideas relating to the party from being openly debated. So I said this is where the Democrat Party is driving America. The power and control of the Democrat Party allegiance to it and its ideology above all else. with regard, right to Rome, to those who do not belong to the monopolistic party, the party state, the Democrat party, I'm arguing, is the party state. The 
moments now, the party's over. Reserves for itself almost unbounded possibilities of action. Besides, if the monopoly is justified by the vastness of the revolutionary changes to be achieved, how can one ask the exercise of power to be moderate and even legal? Exactly. It's the Democrat Party's endless intrusions, I write, into our lives and self-righteous justification. Those who love our country, the principles and values in which we respond to the Democrat Party's pushed and dragged the nation into a disastrous and perilous place. Decades of usurpations of the Constitution, family, and faith. Someone's gone into New Jersey and parental control. You actually have the governor and the attorney general suing their parents. One! To impose on them the right, the educational bureaucracy to keep from parents these so-called transitioning, gender transitioning of their children. It's unbelievable. So I say decades of usurpations of the Constitution, family, and faith, and abuses of power and governance in support of a so-called progressive agenda, more to the point, Marxist theories and models of ruling. So from time to time, I'm going to be pulling more passages out. I'm not going to I'll use the word, monopolize the program. But the purpose of this book is it's relatable to every time that's taking place in this book. What I just read to you there is the nature of the Democrat Party. And what I say later, I will read it in this book. That the Democrat Party is not only it's a cultural party. It's not really, really a cultural party. It is the federal government's party. It is the party of the government. That is, as a Roman puts it, it is the party of the state. This is a very different Party. Whatever you think One, of it, it's a political two, party. It's not a political three. party. It's not the party of the state. It's not control of the bureaucracy. The Democrat Party oh. has that. If you can talk to yourself, it's the Democrat Party. It's just on shutting down the government. It's, 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 been, well, man, it's, it's been incredible. What an amazing match we've had. We should actually stop it for a money. We should do the thing. And the answer is this. Just like Xi in China... Marxist regimes, they play long ball. The Democrat Party will defend the bureaucracy to the end. It insists on expanding. It insists on making it immune from oversight. I'm not a so you have the it's civil service, you have public sector unions, you have the impossibility it's of moving people out of position. When's the last it's time a department a was eliminated? They're never eliminated. How about an agency? They're never eliminated. They're expanded. I mean, Perhaps they're combined. They become increasingly powerful. Nah, they're reaching into your homes. Well. They're reaching into your automobiles. They're reaching into your lives. They're reaching into your children's lives. And it's going to get far worse before it gets better. Why? Because until we accept the fact, recognize it, and tell our fellow citizens or family members, the Democrat Party is not merely a political party. It is the party of the state. And it wants complete monopolistic control. And so even though people go through the motions of voting, You've been dealing with it's the, the Democrat Party's position and activist that seeks to make it home, homie, irrelevant I need her, yo. I'm not a whether you vote or not. It's only a little flame. I'm not a because they're the state party. It's only a little truth. And they will pull the shots no matter what. It's only a little love. I'm Just not another a tiny little glimpse I'm into I'm not the Democrat Party hates America. It's I hope you'll grab your pre orders as quickly as possible. As soon as it comes out, I want you to have it in your hands so you can really jump into this. We have an election coming up, and I think this is very, very important. It's important that our focus be on how diabolical and evil the Democrat Party is. 
you grab your copy right now at Amazon, books a million, Barnes and Noble, online. Barnes and Noble. My friend, 2022 is history. Have you thought about what you'll do in 2023? How will you make it better than last year? That's why I have a challenge for you. Resolve to become a better educated American. Look, every new year is a new opportunity, so I have a great way for you to make the most of this. The good folks at Hillsdale College have made their amazing online courses free for all who wish to learn. My challenge to you, take just one of these fantastic courses. You can discover the beauty of the Bible in the Genesis story, study the writings of C.S. Lewis, or explore the... <laughs> the Elections Clause of the Constitution provides this part of it, quote, the times, places, and manner holding elections for senators and representatives shall be prescribed in each state by the legislature thereof. It's only a little truth. It's so the state, argument. the legislature, is the beginning and the end. But the Congress may at any time by law make or alter such regulations, except as to the places of choosing senators. Now, the word legislature is in there. There's a common understanding of a legislature. It's not complicated. This is one of the clear pieces of text in the Constitution. How else could they have written it? And it was obviously drafted at the Constitutional Convention, it was adopted at the Constitutional Convention, and it was adopted by the ratifying states. But that's not good enough for the U.S. Supreme Court. That's not good enough for governors, for boards of supervisors, boards of election, state courts, lower federal courts, it's not good enough. That's right. Seems pretty plain to me. But the Democrats, in advance of this decision, had a full court press, and I mean the Democrats and the media and elsewhere, suggesting that if you rule that the language in the Constitution says what it says, then there must be something wrong with you. This is a unique theory. It's a theory. But the state legislatures have the final say. And that there isn't state court review. The U.S. Supreme Court today even expanded it to the federal court. His tag team partner, so the state legislature is just a bit player, and it can be overruled by state courts, by federal and courts. Do you remember all this during the last election, correct? So the Supreme Court just rewrote the and Constitution. Remember the first hour where I read at some point? our constitution. And that what it takes is virtuous people to embrace it. To follow it. To execute. Well, we lack virtuous people in high positions in America today. Is he running around trying to get Trump? Pretty much all they do these days. But they destroy the country. Before I get into the case, I want you to know that the kooks at MSNBC, you know Obama, a kook himself, and he spent his career condemning the Constitution, those who read it. Well, they praised Roberts, the Chief Justice, who wrote the majority decision, and blew out the text. Kavanaugh, Kavanaugh, who was so beaten down by the left, he's doing everything he can to, to build up his cred. And Barrett, Biggest disappointment of them all. Last days of the Trump administration, she is confirmed. She's considered a scholar. It turns out she's just another rhino. Because she's under the wing of Roberts. And this is, after all, the Roberts court. He doesn't like all the talk about a right wing court. This case is in the Senate. The majority decision it is illogical, completely illogical. Two grounds. Number one, this case was already resolved. Even though it went up to the Supreme Court by the Supreme Court of North Carolina, the petitioners, including the Speaker of the North Carolina House, 
Congress said that the North Carolina Supreme Court did not have the power to change the district law that were determined by the Republican state legislature. It didn't have that power. And they cited, among other things, this section of the Constitution. We get to make these decisions. The people who elect us, we get to make these decisions. Well, guess what? In the next election, the subsequent election, the people of North Carolina elected a new Supreme Court. A new Supreme Court, a majority, I should say. And that court reversed the prior court and agreed with the Republican speaker. One, two, the case was over. There were no issues for the U.S. Supreme Court. That happens from time to time. But the U.S. Supreme Court didn't drop the case. He wanted to give an opinion. The majority wanted to give an opinion. Even though there was no issue left. One, two, three. As a result of the state election, the majority of the state they won the issue. But the U.S. Supreme Court, the majority said, no, we want to take this up. Well, number one, that is outrageous. That means the court wants to play in this field and act in this role. It had literally no basis for ruling anything today. Because the people who brought the case, their case was satisfied. It was over. It's moot. But Roberts, the Chief Justice, the three Marxist radicals on the court who always stand together when it comes to a major case. And now the two other rhinos, they wanted to hear the case. They wanted to decide on the case. Now, what did they decide? What did they decide? Language seems pretty clear, doesn't it? It's plain English. I mean, if you come from a big time law school and you've been a judge or you've been some, certainly you know how to read plain English, like a few sentences in the Constitution. Let me read them again. The times, places, and manner of holding elections for senators and representatives shall be prescribed in each state by the legislature thereof that the Congress may at any time by law make or alter such regulate. There's another section of the Constitution, too, which we've spent a lot of time on. Again, it emphasizes the role of the state legislature in the choosing of electors. It doesn't say the state. It says the state legislature. And yet in other parts of the Constitution, we have a whole Tenth Amendment that talks about the states, not the state legislature. This had no impact on the six justices. Six to two, the three truly excellent justices, Alito, Thomas, and Gorsuch. And before I give you the second point, the reason the justices would drop this case, particularly the three Republicans, is because they wanted to appeal Making his way to the right. Democrat Party need that's been pounding them lately. They call John Roberts Hollywood John because he reads the news and he's on and the news. It's his care, baby. Kavanaugh, as I've said, is trying to remake himself. And Barrett is a lost soul. He is subjected to the influences of the Chief Justice. <laughs> a lousy Chief Justice. Supreme Court ruled this MSNBC. Supreme Court rules against giving state legislatures unchecked control over federal elections. How do you like that sound? How do you like that part? No, no, we'll give it to the courts instead. They'll have unchecked control. The justices rejected the, quote, independent state legislature theory. <laughs> so it's a theory. There it is in black and white in the Constitution. But it's a theory, you see, America. Which was cited by Trump supporters during the 2020 election. Only me. The theory would have restricted the power of state courts to review certain election laws. Because the framers didn't say it. The states. They said the state legislature. Each state by the legislature. They're right. The 
step to love. They know how to write. Okay. They know how to take these things through. But you see, what happens here is when you abandon the Constitution, the mornings of the Constitution, you can do these sorts of things. So the three Marxists on the court, they held firm. And they were joined by the three Ronos on the court. So there you go. Six to three. I'm afraid this is going to turn into another Burger Court, to be perfectly honest with you. Warren Burger. I interned for Warren Burger when I was in law school. I drafted the speeches, most of them. It dealt with the poor quality of teaching in law schools when it comes to actual litigation. Because he asked me to look into those things, and I certainly enjoyed it, and I certainly did. And he was quite right. But that was a court that was all over the map. Because you had leftists, you had one conservative, and then you had others who were looking for, you know, in each case, looking for a way in, a way out, I don't know. So this is the way NBC News and MSNBC 